All right, guys, we're back with a table full of, if you're new to this, a lot of confusing stuff. If you're not new to this, a lot of fun toys. Um, so we're going to pick up kind of on part two here. What we're going to cover is basically, I kind of covered a little bit on what you want out of your jet. Whether you want a speed, thrust, or a combination of the two. Um, I told you that on this one I'm going to go ahead and go with a combination of the two. Um, now my fan unit on this one is uh, pretty simple, not only because it has a fan that they recommend for it, which is a 68mm, uh, 70mm shroud, so 70mm, um, 5 blade wings makers fan. Now this isn't the one that's going in it, this is uh, actually one that I used on another 4S system. Um, ran really good in it for a while, um, but I run fans to a certain point. After so many flights, I always get in there and inspect them, and if the blades or something aren't up to par, um, that fan gets retired. So this is a retired fan here, um, along with a retired uh, uh, 4S Turbo Outrunner. Now, don't let the size of this thing fool you. Uh, these Wingsmakers Turbo Outrunners, if you can see the click in there that it's doing with my fingers, very, very strong uh, rare earth magnets are what they use inside those motors. And uh, their fans... Regardless if this is a Wingsmakers jet, if this was another brand jet sitting here on the table and uh, it was within the option range of the wing Wingsmakers fans, that would be the fan I would still put into it. Um, now the reason for this, guys, is I'll show you. The Wingsmakers do their fans a lot different than the standard ducted fan. Um, everything's actually kind of in reverse. I'll go ahead and show you here what I'm talking about. Okay, now this is going to be your fan shroud here, okay? Here is the front, here is the back. Okay, so it's already probably looking a little different. If you know your fans really well, I'll be like, well, the front and the back, the big space and the small space are backwards. Well, that's where they get literally, guys, on a 3S uh, pack on a, a Wingsmaker fan, I get the same performance I get if not better actually than a 4S pack on a standard fan and uh, <clears throat> part of the reason for this is is the way that they have designed them now it's I've hardly ever seen any like this um, they've got an awesome design but there's one bad thing about it being such a uh, rare style design it's very hard to find motors if you want to keep upgrading um, the best bet if you own a Wingsmakers fan and you're looking to upgrade motors, you want to shop in the in the heli section, okay? Because helis have the same style motor and casing with your screw ports that uh, that the Wingsmakers fans run off of. Now these are not heli motors; these are the Wingsmaker 4S Turbo Outrunners. Um, so, anyways, let's get to the fan real quick, guys. Okay? So the fan setup on this, like I said, is completely different than what you would expect. Um, I'll go ahead and show you how this sets up. So, and I'm not going to do it, you know, per book. Plus, I got a camera in my hand, so some of it's kind of tricky one handed. Um, the fan setup on this, guys, goes like this, okay? And the side where your blades are going to be is actually the side where your motor will mount. The shaft of the motor in a Wingsmaker's ducted fan unit has absolutely nothing to do with the fan unit, okay? So, We'll just pretend I'm screwing bolts and nuts in here. Um, so basically, I want to make sure I get this all right for you guys. I know it's right. I just got to get her in there. She's pretty tight fit, which is good. Okay, there we go. Snapped in. Okay, so basically, guys, here's where we're at. Okay, now this is how the Wingsmakers fans are set up. Normally, you would just have the shaft of the motor coming through here with... Um, you know, either a screw-on, uh, a screw-on fan blade, or you know, an adapter to put on the fa fan blade you want. Well, on the Wings Makers, there's the shaft, and it will never do a thing. Um, actually, right here, at this end, after you uh, do your soldering and get your speed control, everything like that hooked up, um, that's done. You put, simply put in four bolts, which if it was lined up, I know it's not. Sorry, guys. You put four bolts in those four holes right there to lock down the head of the motor. Okay, and then you go ahead and you get your cone right here, which has your exit ports for your uh, wires and also has breather holes. And you go ahead and you put that on and you close this up and you're done with that side. 
Okay, then you flip it over. And here's where the wings makers just did a, an amazing job with their fans. Okay, here's a, here's a typical five blade wings makers fan. Very good fan, good pitch. It's a good combination fan. Okay, and how they did it. Now I do have a sticker on the side of this motor, some tape guys, so I can identify it and know which one it is out of all the ones I have. The fan, as you can see, has a very thick cup to it and it has its own bolt pattern in there, a three bolt pattern. <clears throat> On a Wingsmaker's fan, the actual fan slips over the entire can of the motor, okay? Now I'm not gonna put it all the way in there or I won't be able to get it out. They fit very tight. But just so you guys get the idea. Now that would sit flush if I put it all the way in, obviously. But, so the Wingsmaker's do theirs this way. So the fan actually, the can of the motor completely fills this whole area and then is bolted on by three bolts right here so it's a really cool design I honestly haven't run into many EDFs I don't think at all um, that I've used the same style design on so as you can see when I take it out here guys what I'm talking about is being opposite now if that was all the way on if I didn't have my sticker on there and that was all the way on this is bolted in the shaft sits inside that cone and never does a thing this, the head of the motor is locked in place and the fan spins off of the can. Well, off the can, see? Right out of my hands. So it spins off the can. See? Tough fans. And uh, that design is just awesome. I don't know why it works so well um, compared to my uh, most of my other ducted fans which run off of, you know, your typical, uh, your typical motor shaft, but it's, it's just an awesome, awesome setup. And it is it keeps the motor very cool believe it or not um, so once that's in there and in place like that you have your typical you know protector that goes over it like that a little bitty breather hole in the center as you can see that that'll go allows air to go all the way through um, now a simple modification depending on if you do have a wings makers fan um, good job you're not going to be disappointed um, let's see if I can get the cone out here there is a little mod now this is a an older kit here this fan kit um, but they haven't changed at all really guys um, the only thing they're doing now is about that far down there's no tip on the cone anymore it's an open hole and they did that because when you put the fans in and you get everything set up everything is fin finalized by using CA so you actually CA this cone on well it was getting to be to where if you wanted to switch something out or let's say you burned a motor out or something you were breaking more parts trying to get that motor out than you were helping yourself so what they did is they finally opened up the end of the cone here which I've been cutting my the tips of my cones off since I started with my first fan and tried to get the motor out of it um, they've opened the, the back of this up now so you can get a screwdriver down in, the, in there and uh, loosen the motor up and pop the whole unit out without any problems whatsoever um, so that's a Wingsmakers fan, guys, and uh, extremely high performance on a 4S and on a 3S. Um, a 3S throws around my uh, 1200 gram J10 without a problem, with incredible uh, maneuverability. Um, so, and we're going to be running 4S with a turbo outrunner. So we're going to be running a high setup fan, guys. So that's going to lead us to our speed control. Well, we've got a lot of choices. I've got a little smorgasbord of speed controls out here. Now we've got all the way from little to big. Here's a little 18, 18 amp. Now we got a 40, okay. A little cheapo 40, I should say. And there's an E-Flight 40. Um, and a Detrum, let's see, that's a Detrum 60. And then we've got a Detrum 80, okay. Now, I always use the specs that the manufacturers recommend as the absolute minimum. Um, because their specs are normally for average flying. It'll say for for basic flying or something like that. So that is always the absolute lowest I will go with anything. And I never put in what is recommended. I always go higher. Um, so in this application, they actually recommend a 40 amp speed control with a 45 amp burst allowance for a 4S setup. Um, I don't really care what model I run. I won't run a 4S setup on a 40 amp speed control. So that's going to make it easy. That's going to knock these out for us. So now we're down to 60 and 80. And this is where a lot of people make a little mistake. 
like, hey, we got a 60, we got an 80. 80 is bigger, you know, that little bit of margin there. You got, you got room just in case. Not necessarily always the best thing, okay? 80 can let through more than you may want at certain times. So you want to stay within, you know, a reasonable range. You know, I've got all the way up to 100, even 110 uh, amp speed controls over here. And, you know, I could easily drop an 80 into it and it would fly great. It probably would. And it would stay nice and cool and everything. But it's just a little bit of extra that you don't need. There's no reason for it. Um, and I've, just because I've run the numbers on these before, I know that a 60 amp on this is going to be plenty. Uh, I won't run into a problem at all with the 60 amp. So for this setup, we're determined we're going to go ahead and go with a 60 amp Detrim Speed Control. This can take a 2 to 6 S LiPo. Um, now it's not specified on here, but I know that this, this has a uh, 5 volt 3 amp uh, linear BEC, internal BEC. Um, however, we will not be using that. Um, that will be disabled and we will go with a separate BEC with a separate battery pack. And the way I determine when I need a BEC is based off of a couple things. Um, first of all, if I'm running 4S, regardless of the setup. If it's a 4S, just my general rule, and this isn't a rule anywhere else, my general rule, 4S, I always go BEC with a separate LiPo. Or four or more servos, I go BEC with a separate LiPo. There's no reason to take a chance. If I've got it, I'm gonna use it. So, just because I want that separate backup, okay, so we'll, dis we'll disable the BEC in this one. And guys, if you've never done that, it's just, it's extremely simple. Um, you go on your clip here, and you'll, you'll always want to get rid of the center wire, okay? Now, a lot of people just cut it and stuff like that. I don't recommend cutting it. If you go in, I'll try and get in close here, on the connector, that little black clip right there, guys, you can pull that up and pull that center wire straight out. Um, so just do that and then cap off that center wire because whenever your system's active, that is a live wire. Uh, get rid of that and then you are free to hook up a BEC without overpowering or burning up your system. Now when it comes to BEC choices, I just put out three here, um, just three basics. Kind of a, a high, low, and a medium. Um, on the low end, we got a little one here. This is a little Hobby King, uh, BEC, UBEC, I'm sorry. Um, and this is a 5 volt, 5 amp. Plenty, of, this this would probably, probably do the job. Uh, I'm not going to take a chance on it. You know, it's a small BEC, and it's got a small heat sink. Um, with a lot of power, I'm going to be pushing. My last J10 pushed over 1,200 watts. Um, so just because of the temperature, I'm not going to go with a BEC that small. Okay, now it might work just perfect guys but we're just not gonna do that okay so we're gonna knock it down to two here all right and these are both UBCs one is in a line uh, this is a both of these BECs here one is Eternity both of these have selectable outputs so I can make this system run on a 5 volt output or a 6 volt output that's why I choose the selectable output UBECs it's because I can determine what I want my system to run. Now I don't like running digital servos, I never have. Um, I go with standard servos. Um, so there's no reason for me to run a six volt system. So I can knock these down with the switches that they have on them, okay? I can knock these down to both. Both of these I can make run my system at, uh, at uh, five volts. So the standard servo running off 4.8 to five volts won't have any problem. If I push six volts through this on a standard servo system, there's a good chance I could fry a servo in flight. Don't want to take that chance. So between the two, both will do the job. However, this is a, what you consider a big boy. This is a 15 amp BEC, okay? This can take a lot of power and give a lot of power. And it's really overkill um, for this size jet. So uh, this one right here, if you guys remember talking about my other J10 with thrust vector, since I'll be adding anywhere from two to five servos, depending if I make functional canards, um, this will be the BEC that I'll choose for that one because I'll be running a lot more uh, electronics in it than I will in this one. So I'm going to go with the good old trustworthy Align, Align RCE B6X BEC. 
Now this is a has an on-off switch here, has LED voltage indicator lights right there that show the power of your separate LiPo pack. And I never merge mine with my flight pack, just in case. You never know. If the flight pack dies, guys, your, your BEC dies. Um, and this one also has a step-down regulator. So this one's an inline, in-wire step-down regulator. So to get my whole system to run, you know, the heli guys use these, and they'll use these to run their system. And then on that tail servo, that uh, tail rotor servo, which always seems to be a 4.8 servo, they'll run this little wire to it to knock it down to 5 volts. Well, what I'm going to do is put this with its own LiPo setup, and then the step down is actually going to run from my separate LiPo through the system, and then the step down is going to go to my receiver. So the whole system will only be pushing 5.1 volts to my receiver. So that'll kick me into a 5 volt system, which is what I want, and I'll simply run a separate LiPo for that. Um, my standard lipos that I run on those um, will be anywhere from, let me grab them here guys. Here's two good examples. Both of these will work just fine and give me probably seven to ten flights. Um, here's a little two cell um, E-Flight uh, 7.4 volt 800 milliamp 2S. That'll do, that'll be plenty for, for a BEC. Um, Second choice, if you want a little bit more milliamps, but you're giving up some more weight, um, you know, this is just a Gen's Ace uh, 7.4 volt, 2 cell, um, 1000 milliamp. This will be more of the size I'll run in my J10s. So, you know, not too big of a difference. This one I've got it written is 67 grams. This one right here is 48 grams. So, not a huge difference. So, uh, I'll go ahead and, and take the... Uh, extra power and uh, possibly a couple extra flights if I needed it out of the other one. So we've got our fan chosen, we've got our motor set up, which I'm just going to use like I said, the uh, uh, Wingsmaker Turbo Outrunner and I'll get you the specs on that one. Um, the specs don't sound impressive on that Turbo Outrunner, but uh, let me tell you guys, it, 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 will, uh, it will impress if you get one. Um, that little Turbo Outrunner right there now these are the standards. Um, its operating power is 660 watts. Um, operating voltage can be 6 to 15 volts. Um, operating current is 45 amps. Peak current is 60 amps. Um, the resistance is about 28 ohms and uh, the KV is uh, 3030. So you know 3030 KV on that little motor. Doesn't sound like a ton but I'll tell you what it's a powerful little beast. So uh, there's our fan motor speed control and BEC setup so from that point on you can go onto your servos and uh, you know other small electronics servos of your choice what you want to run and remember if you're going digital you're gonna have to put that into the equation with your BEC and with your power setup so for part two we're gonna cut it off here and when we come back we'll start eliminating all this junk and getting into actually installing